everyone, it's Burrito Sam here and as every year I'm making an animation rewind. But this time around it will be slightly different. I will be voicing over this video and I will talk a bit about animations. I apologize in advance for any mistakes since English isn't my first language. Hope this won't be a total mess in the end. Enjoy! My first animation this year was Nilo's Not Ok PMV, and honestly, looking back at it nowadays, it could have had way more potential. The PMV itself wasn't meant to be long, so I tried to show a bit of how Nilo's life got harder when his tribe united with Finns, as it's revealed in my Neverfade comic. Nilo was making his way into the leadership of the tribe due to his activity and how helpful he was. However, the overall result ended being sad. This PMV wasn't meant to be sad, even if there are some shots of Nilo being sad. It was originally meant to show how pressuring this leadership matter was over him and how frustrated he was. There are two scenes where I feel that were right in the main idea. The intro and when he is reacting to his brother. The other scenes aren't bad or less important, however. I just feel that they could have been worked differently. Overall, I still like this PMV. I used this opportunity to try and make less complex swings and I think I did great. It was also a palette PMV, something I wanted to do for a long time. The character's colors represent the original eye colors. Next is Homsun Meme and is an animation meme that never got past the storyboard, sadly. It's about Aquila and features Sam and Ego. Nothing much to say about this one, honestly, but I just want to point out that Ego really, really hates Aquila. Next is I Would Rather Sleep Meme, and oh my god, this was a ride. Before even thinking about doing this meme, my tablet broke, and while I waited for a new one to arrive, guess I would try to make an animation meme on my phone. So half of it was made on my phone with Ibs Paint, and when my tablet arrived I switched it because, god, drawing on Ibs Paint is just too hard for me. The meme itself fits Melo's Ose, Sia, and her backstory, and since they are not my characters, neither story, I can't say much about it. Hope you guys enjoyed it nonetheless. Then we have Brave New World map part, and fucking shit this one was my favorite from the year. I had just too much fun doing it, and I'm still very proud of. This is pretty much spoiler but I'm talking about it anyways. It starts with Gabe and Jelly, who is Ice's mother, talking. The next scene fits them, Falcon, Izzy's father and Izzy herself. This scene is very symbolic, and I will keep it up for interpretation. Then it follows Isis in a not very happy mood, revealing she's with Luke and Ashen. Her horror and the green wings doesn't make Hash happy, yet Luke's pretty surprised she is able to do that. Falcon and Red are somehow aware of what's happening, alongside Gabe, whose scene is also up to interpretation. Lineless is very fun to do, and even if this took longer than I anticipated, I'm very happy I was accepted in this project. Can't wait to see the full map. Next one is the grey map part, featuring Leah. This shows a few keyframes moments in Leah's life. The loss of her kids, her past relationship, and when she's finally standing up to Ryo. The lyrics are just too perfect. It says by itself what happens in the part. Just want to point out too that it was very nice to work with less saturated colors plus a very low opacity shading. Following, we have Loving You Meme, and it was a commission for a sweet person. When they say the characters reference, I was so hyped to do them. The difference of shapes and proportions were going to be so much fun to work with. And it really did. I tried a few new tools in Sony Vegas with this project too. I learned a lot while doing the editing and the communication through the process was so neat. In the next we have In The Water. And god, this cinematic has been stuck in my mind for so long, since I played Telltale's The Walking Dead 2 game a few years ago. I really tried to stick with the animatic style with no shading, and I guess I did it nicely. I kept everyone with certain colors to help identify who was who. This is a parallel animatic, also something I enjoy so much. Even if Siren and Red's stories have similar keyframes, they end up being very distinctive. In a brief explanation, it shows how they left their homes and loved ones and their reactions. 
following big actions of theirs, leading to big consequences and planning. For suspense making, when it says forgive them, release them, the characters they are talking to are not colored and kept as silhouettes. But I can assure you these two characters are very important. And the way Siren and Red approaches impacts a lot. And finally, we have the ending scene where they return home. Siren reuniting with Noah, Jen and Swift happily. And then Red finding Gabe not in a very happy mood. Next are part 8 and 9 for Young Blood map. This is a line art map and honestly I find this very enjoyable, so I had to take part in. Part 8 features Splash and his parents, Elu and Noah. I've talked about the contest behind this part in its description, so I suggest giving it a read. Link will be down in the description. Part 9 was taken as a backup, and I had to use my RPG girl Shell and the gang she's in. She wasn't having a great time and then she realized who she's with. And even having some issues with one of the members of the party, she is somewhat happy to have them. Also, the last scene is a mysterious NPC character for us in the time and the dear GM, if you're watching this, you are just too good in keeping suspense, aren't you? Anyways, in overall, also a part I really enjoyed doing. Drawing humans and humanoids isn't a great trait of mine, but I'm very happy with how they turned out. Following we have from the inside, this map caught my eyes so badly. When I saw the designs and script, I just couldn't resist applying. They are just awesome. Each design is very fucking unique and the script is very well set up. I really wanted to try out a different perspective and camera movement in the last shot, but it didn't really quite work out as I planned. On the other hand, I experimented a lot with less simple backgrounds, and I am quite happy with them and will definitely use them in the future projects. Following, we have another love map part, and this one also got me into applying because 1. It's a trash belt map. 2. The designs are hella cool too. 3. It's a trash belt map. 4. Palette and mood. 5. The damn song. And 6. It's a trash belt map. And please, can I just say how fucking pretty Hostale design is? Also, Moonflower's design also got my heart, but I didn't get to draw her, sadly. Now, listen. Trash belt deserves more love, so please go check this map out for the sake of Star Clan. But, jokes aside now, I enjoyed working in this part a lot. It was quite nice to do a heartwarming part. The characters, shapes and the shading were my favorites for sure. And again, the background parts. Next is Clora and my part, and a quick part featuring Sam and Nikki. There is not much to talk about lore, but the fact that Sam found out something bad about Ego, and Nikki was there to support Sam as the sweetest friend he's always been. Apart with a black shading, by the way. I always wanted to try this out, but never sat down to do it. So yeah, this map really gave me the courage and chance to. And following we have Hitman meme, and oh my god, we finally reached this one. I couldn't wait to talk about this. First, I would like to thank Tina again for commissioning me and give me the chance to make one of my best works of this year. This animation was a blast to work on, and I will never get tired of saying this. I've experimented a lot, I mean a lot, with this one. Art, twin, and effect-wise, you name it. The difference between Xeno and the Black Cat was awesome and very distinct from my usual work style, so I had tons of fun doing them. Also, red and cyan are one of my favorite color combinations, so the shading was so great to do. And let me just mention the twin a little bit. They were insane to make, and the pride aside, I am so, so proud of them. I learned a lot with these twins and also worked with a two in Sony Vegas I wasn't in touch with. So, new learnings. Again, thanks Tina for this insane opportunity. Next is Missing Home Meme, and I don't have much to talk about this one. It was just a quick meme done in one sitting to let some feelings out. Following, we have In the Blue. It was a collab with the amazing Xenodraws, or Tina as a birthday gift for Wild Mellow. 
It was so much fun to plan, shout out and finish this project. Editing went very smoothly. It features Aspen, the wise, from Mello's story Amulet. It's made and related around her backstory and characters she's related to. Next, we have Time for Action PMV. And this one was a very audacious project and also a birthday gift for Mello. It's about her star amulet and it's divided in three parts. Concepts divided as the past, the before and the present. The monochrome part covers the past and the before, followed by the colored scenes that covers the present. I tried out a lot of other concepts in this work, but hey, I'm not talking about them nor detailed wise stuff due to spoilers. I think this one was my first full work with voice actors, which I'm incredibly grateful for helping me with this project. They did an incredible job. I also missed doing a big PMV, so this was very great to do. Following, we have Somebody Animatic, another animation made in one sitting. Not much meaning behind it, but Sam letting out her frustrations regards some stuff. Can say this is a vent, but it also fits Sam's story, so win-win. Plus, the song was made by Blue Eyes. Go give them love, they are starting up and they are very talented. Next is Everlasting Nightmare Part, and again, god, this map concept, song, script, character's design got me so hard. I had to try and apply, and I'm so happy I was accepted in. I wanted to take a step forward and try making frame by frame animation, and so I did. The original idea was to animate the whole part, yet I felt so intimidated by this stuff, so I went with one scene only. I knew it would take a while to get done, but honestly, I got the animated part done quicker than I expected. The part itself, however, took longer due to some personal reasons, but I'm very happy with the result anyways. And the map is complete, check it out, it will be linked in the description. Everlasting Night was the last real animation I got done this year, so I want to take a small space here and mention some countdown animations I made for an RPG I was participating in the beginning of the year. They are looped, except for the final one, which has an animated scene with voiceover. Also, another shoutout. I had a mini PMV in mind featuring the characters from Blood and Water comic, made by Kelpie Art on DeviantArt. I started out making the scenes, but I had to put it on hold due to some reasons, but sadly I didn't get back to it. I may end up finishing it next year, since I have it all traditionally storyboarded. We'll see how it goes. Think that's it, boys. This year was a big ride about animation for me, and I'm surprised I could get this many works done. I have some plans for next year, and depending on how life treats me, some big stuff may come out. But for now, I'm not promising anything. If you would like to see more content from me other than animations, feel free to follow me on Instagram and Twitter. I post some stuff more often there. Also, I made a Ko-Fi and Buy Me A Coffee page recently, if any of you would like to support me there. And of course, my Patreon is linked in the description. There you get early access to stuff and exclusive perks, as well as art. And mainly, thank you guys so much for sticking with me this year. Your support blows me away. You are the best. Wish you all had great holidays and happy new year and I hope to see you soon.